friends. Happy Friday. Today's Friday, Friday, April 17th, 2020. Um, we are finishing up our lessons on context clues today. So I'm so, so excited. This is going to be a pretty short lesson since we're all pretty familiar with context clues since we've been doing it the past two days. Let's stop and think though, what is one thing or one person you're proud of? I know uh, at least one person that I'm, well, I can't pick one person. I know that in general, I'm proud of all of second grade, all of our Kipsters and their families. I know right now is a really hard time in the world and there's a lot of strains on a lot of people. So we all as a second grade team, as teachers, we all appreciate the work that you guys are putting in. I know it's not easy. I know that it can be challenging sometimes to watch all the videos to complete all the work. And we just wanna say how much we love Love and appreciate all the dedication that you guys are doing all the check-ins all the calls all the texts we love you and miss you so so much all right so let's go ahead and get started with our lesson today I or yesterday I let you guys pick your own goal again I'm gonna let you pick your own goal again to become an active learner so you might choose reflecting on what type of student I am you might choose collaborating together with friends to learn so you might uh, message some friends on google classroom like hey like what did you get for this answer or how did you get this answer or can you explain to me how to do something you might be asking questions when you don't understand something so that might be asking someone in your home that might be texting your teacher that might be facetiming your teacher you might be challenging yourself to do more that means if you've had a hard time completing all your assignments maybe today is going to be the day that you go back and finish some of those assignments that you haven't completed I want you to take some time and come up with your goal. Or it could be something completely different that's not on this one. Pause the video and think about it for a minute. Ready to go? All right, let's go ahead and check in with ourselves how you're feeling. I'm feeling really happy. It's Friday. I know that even though I won't be able to go anywhere because I'm practicing social distancing, I'm really happy because I really enjoy Fridays. I think that they're fun and I'll get to, like yesterday, spend some time with my, spend some time FaceTiming and doing Zoom chats with my family and my nieces and nephews that I miss very, very much. All right, now, our daily objectives, like I've said the past couple of days, they're not changing. Still working on sight words, except today we are not gonna be doing any of our vocab words. We went over synonyms already. We went over the definitions. We practiced putting them into, um, we practiced putting them in blanks or filling them in for different sentences. So I feel like my friends are feeling pretty confident about their new vocab words. Now, for our sight words, just like yesterday, I had you practice writing sight words on your own. So you're going to write the sight words five times, how many times? Five times on your own. Pause the video and write it five times. Did you do it? I hope you did. Now that you've written it five times, if there's someone older than you that can pause the video and have you and test you, that would be great. So they can put the computer or the tablet or the phone away from you and then they can read out the word. So they'd say open to where you couldn't see the word and then you'd have to spell it for them. Then they move on to the next one and the next one, or maybe they'll switch it around for you. Just to give yourself a little practice without actually seeing your words, all right? So let's go ahead. We know that context clues are clues that good readers use to find the meaning of unknown words. We've been practicing, practicing using context clues all week. I know our biggest strategy that we've used is practicing filling in the blank with our options. So let's continue that today. The meadow was full of wild flowers. There were not many plants and the trees were sparse. Hmm. What does the word sparse mean? I know one of our strategies is also looking at the picture. So I'm going to use this picture to help me. It says the meadow was full of wild flowers. There were not many, there were not many plants and the trees were sparse. Hmm. So it looks like I'm seeing a lot of wild flowers and like the sentence says there aren't many large plants. I don't see any big plants. Do you see any trees? Not really. So if I know I don't see any trees in the picture, what do you think sparse means? Could it mean many, large, or few? Hmm. Well, if I don't see any in the picture, could there be many? No. 
that doesn't make any sense. And hmm, do I see any large trees in our picture? No. Well, if it's saying there weren't many large plants and trees were sparse, and I definitely don't see many trees, maybe one over here, could it mean few? I think it must mean few. Let's try filling them in with the blanks. The meadow was full of wildflowers. There were not many large plants and the trees were many. That doesn't make sense to me. Like we said, our picture doesn't show us that. There aren't many trees, so we know that one's wrong. The meadow was full of wildflowers. There are not many large plants and the trees were large. Well, we don't see any trees in our picture and it certainly isn't large. The meadow was full of wildflowers. There were not many large plants and the trees were few. <laughs> or there were few trees. Well, I think that's pretty accurate. I don't see hardly any trees. I see one over here, but everything else I see wildflowers or bushes. So which could be our answer? What is our best answer? Yeah, I think it must be few. Let's have you practice them on your own. Pause the video, read them, and answer them. When you're ready to go, press play so we can continue. Did you do them? All right, let's go over it then and see if you got them right. Honesty knew that the advanced studies program was rigorous. It would require a lot of reading and homework. She knew that she was up for the challenge. Hmm, it seems like in our sentence, it sounds like this advanced studies program makes it would require her to do a lot of extra work and it sounds like it would be a challenge what does the word rigorous mean could it be boring maybe maybe it is boring could it be difficult or could it be surprising well let's think about what's happening in the sentence we know that it would require a lot of work so a lot of reading a lot of extra homework and that would be a challenge which one of our options would make the most sense if something's going to be requiring a lot of work um, requiring a lot of reading and going to be a challenge? Would it be boring? Would it be difficult? Or would it be surprising? On the count of three, shout out what your answer is. Three, two, one. Difficult. I agree. It would be difficult. If it's requiring you to do a lot of reading and homework and then it's going to be a challenge, then it must mean difficult. Now, before I go ahead and circle it, I need to put in my options as my answer just to make sure it makes sense in our sentence. It's not just about sounding right. Remember, we learned that yesterday. It has to make sense as well. Honesty knew that the advanced studies program was boring. It would require a lot of reading and homework. She knew she was up for the challenge. Hmm, that doesn't make all, that doesn't make a ton of sense to me, especially when it says she knew she was up for the challenge. If something was boring, usually people aren't gonna be like, oh, it's a, it's a challenge. So I know that can't be right. Honesty knew the advanced studies program was difficult. It would require a lot of reading and a lot of reading and homework. She knew she was up for the challenge. That makes a lot of sense. If something's difficult, you're probably going to have to do a lot of extra work, and it's probably going to be challenging. So let's definitely think about that one. Let's double check surprising. Honesty knew that the advanced studies program was was surprising. Hmm. It would require a lot of reading and homework. She knew she was up for the challenge. Well, it doesn't really make sense to say that Honesty knew the advanced studies program was surprising. That doesn't make sense and it doesn't sound right to me. So let's X that out. So we know that our answer must be difficult. Let's look at our next one. There was some controversy about the school's new dress code. While most parents and teachers were in favor for the new code of the new code, most students were not. What does controversy mean? Hmm. So let's see what's happening in the story. It sounds like some people, like the parents and teachers, like the new dress code, but the students do not. So some like it, but some do not. And it's saying that there was controversy about the school's new dress code. What could controversy mean? Does it mean surprise, arrangement, or disagreement? Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and try to fill in our blanks. There was some surprise about the school's new dress code while some parents and teachers were in favor of the new code most students were not no it doesn't there's just, there's nothing in my sentence that makes me think that anyone's surprised by it hmm so i don't think that could be right there was some arrangement about the school's new dress code while some parents and teachers were in favor of the new code most students were not well an arrangement that doesn't really make sense to me based off of what's happening in the sentence let's try our last one there was some disagreement about the school's new dress code. While some parents and teachers were in favor of the new code, 
Most students were not. Hmm. Disagreement. I know that's when people do not agree on something. So, and it's sounding like parents and teachers like it, but the students do not. So it sounds like they're disagreeing. Which one? Do you think disagreement could be our answer? Set thumbs up, set thumbs down. I think it could be. If we have two different groups of people not agreeing on something, then there must be a disagreement or some controversy where people are not agreeing on something. If you got both of those right, give yourself a pat on the back. All right, friends. Now, context clues to wrap up our lessons on context clues. What are they? There are words, there are clues that good readers use to help them figure out the meaning of unknown words. Remember, some strategies that we use, like today we use pictures, we use what was happening in the story, we use the examples that they gave us, and we always practice filling in that unknown word with our options to see what makes sense. It's not enough just to see what sounds right. You have to make sure that it makes sense based off of what is happening in your sentence or in your passage, all right? Like the, the, like the previous days, you have a guided practice. Remember that is not for a grade, that's additional practice. Even though it's not for a grade does not mean that you should not be doing it. You should still do it. Then you're gonna take your exit ticket and then you're gonna log into Lexia or read a nice book. Remember next week, I'm gonna be asking you what books you've been reading, so I want you to be prepared, all right? I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Friday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Please make sure you're staying safe. Have fun, right? See you later.